Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. The purchase and pricing email for buying this watch or any watch you see here on Watchbox Reviews. It's in the description below, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Tudor Heritage Black Bay, sometimes known as the Black Bay Red, in-house caliber, 41 millimeters in stainless steel. The watch is 14.8 millimeters thick. As you'll note, 50 millimeters, 50.1, lug to lug to be precise, and 22 millimeters between the lugs. The watch is substantial. It's designed to evoke the no guard, big crowned Tudor and Rolex subs of the 50s and early 60s watches that were, of course, parts sharing exercises as Rolex made the cases and the bracelets for both Tudor and Rolex in the day. So this is a shared heritage with its big brother, the Rolex brand, and on the wrist you can see it's a modern watch. It is substantial. The case is fairly thick, though not such that it wouldn't fit underneath most cuffs. This isn't even a particularly casual cuff. This is a dress shirt and the watch would fit underneath. I would recommend the watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference because it's only 50 millimeters lug to lug. Um, I would also say that the watch wears well as a sports casual piece. It'll dress up, but it'll also dress down. And part of the reason is the color, the color of that burgundy red anodized aluminum bezel. Let's get a bit closer and take a look at the hardware. You can see the bracelet features a pivoted end link, so you can pull it straight down around a small wrist and that mitigates against the width of the case. That's why I say 14 centimeters circumference wrist, you're good to go. Polished outer face is satin centers. So you can see a simulated rivet design because back in the day, the Tudor and Rolex subs would have used Rolex manufactured rivet bracelets, but make no mistake, screws are used to fix and remove the removable links. Internally, it's well made with ceramic pin snaps that are spring loaded, so the clasp will maintain its tolerances. I love that sound over time as the metal simply can't aggress against or wear down the ceramic. High polish internally, this is nothing like the old Rolex stamped clasps of the 90s. You can see internally there are three divots drilled so you can change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp and you can see there are more removable links. The swing arms are solid and the clamshell features a handsome Tudor logo as a kerf to allow you to dig in your nail. Secure when closed, the watch is impressive with a few nods to history as the old Tudor and Rolex subcases would have featured handmade bevels. These are not handmade, but they're appreciated all the same. A handsome transition from the high polish of the case flank to the satin lug hoods. Roll it all over. And you can see that no guard profile, like the old Tudor Submariner 792223 and 24. And like the 24 with the big crown, you have that large oversized sharply knurled crown that's easy to grip when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. Note the matching anodized aluminum sleeve in red to coordinate with the bezel. Tudor Rose logo on the crown, that's the early 1968 and previous, and then Tudor Shield logo on the dial. That was from roughly mid-1968 onward. So both eras of Tudor logo depicted. Another era of Tudor depicted as you have these snowflake style hands. Those were characteristic of roughly 1968 to 1965 Tudor snowflake submariners. So the watch does incorporate many different inspirations. You can see there is a chaptering outboard in gilt style golden print. So that is yet another reference to early subs. The bezel features a sharp knurling outboard, which is very difficult to describe, but at the same time, I can tell you all you need to know. It grips and it rips. The bezel sounds great. Sharp and chunky. It's very different from a Rolex bezel, which tends to be a bit more refined and prone to gliding. This one's easy to place because each detent is so chunky. You have a sapphire capped bezel pearl that you can line up with the minute hand. Now you've got a zero to 60 minute timer as dive watches are want to provide. I actually prefer a dive bezel to a chronograph. The watch features stop seconds, automatic winding, a 70 hour power reserve, Inside the case, we and you can see there's not a whole lot to see, but we have a Tudor manufacturer caliper MT506. Three-day power reserve. It's got a full balance bridge and a free sprung index to avoid shock-induced timing deviation. It also features a silicon hairspring, something still rare in Rolex movements for anti-magnetism. You have a 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, what's known as a modern high beat rate. And the watch is adjusted in five positions as a COSC 
Swiss chronometer. All of this water resistant down to 200 meters, and we're approximating here 660 feet. It's a watch that offers just about everything you could want with a beautifully balanced no-date dial. And you will note, unlike the historic models, this one features all applique indices rather than printed features. An upscale contemporary favorite of collectors who prize vintage but prefer modern fit finish engineering and water resistance. This is the Tudor Heritage Black Bay Red. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com to purchase. And we're back with the Tudor Heritage Black Bay. You can see the loomed bezel pearl, but also the loomed seconds hand. Every dive watch should have, for safety, a loomed seconds hand.